All right, there are media reports that the Trump administration will move forward with the sale of high-tech aircraft to Nigeria for its campaign against Boko Haram Islamic extremists. The U.S. Congress is expected to receive formal notification within weeks, uh, setting in motion a deal with Nigeria that the Obama administration had planned to approve at the very end of Barack Obama's presidency. The arrangement will call for Nigeria to purchase up to 12 Embraer A29 Super Tucano aircraft with sophisticated targeting gear for nearly $600 million. That's a lot of money. Yes, indeed. Now, though President Donald Trump has made clear his intention to approve the sale of the aircraft, the National Security Council is still working on the issue. Nigerian military authorities are yet to confirm the story as it is said to be mere speculations. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. all right, while we're expecting our guest, Tony Ofeyeton, to uh, make himself comfortable, uh, well, this is an interesting one. Of course, we remember that Donald Trump put a call across to uh, President Buhari yes. uh, during his uh, leave in London, and he did assure him that he would support or, you know, try to cut a new deal uh, to support Nigeria's fight against uh, is Islamic extremism and, of course, the war against uh, uh, Boko Haram. And it's looking good when you have people like John McCain saying, yes, we really are in support of uh, Nigeria getting this yeah. um, aircraft from uh, the United States. But the issues of human rights abuses and all of that, it's causing some kind you of... You took uh, that out of my mouth. Yeah. But Amnesty International has not uh, taken back his uh, report mm. uh, talking about the Nigerian army and yeah. the issue of uh, human rights abuse. Mm. And don't forget... Like we said in our report, there, the mm -hmm. Security Council has a debate on that. And the Congress in the U.S. has, has to a debate, debate on that. Yeah. So really, it's mm. not a done deal yet, it's but it's not. in the offing. Absolutely. So think. Well, joining us now is the security expert, Tony Ofoyeton. Good morning and thanks uh, for morning. joining us. Good morning. Good morning. You're smiling. <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> it <All right>. sounds <laughs> good. Yeah. $600 million good, dollars yeah. worth of uh, aircraft. A very specialized one. A-29. Um, what do you think about this deal if it really does scale through? Well, if it scales through, it means that um, we are going to be most likely some steps ahead of um, terrorism mm. okay. in the country. That is the advantage, the overall advantage. Um, in as much as many of us are really praying that Nigeria is not established as a terrorist country, <laughs> a most quickly say that mm, uh, really yes that in as come much as, as a surprise to a lot of people uh, yes uh, we, are, we are really praying when that you have nigeria the full no, is, uh, that is you number have four on the list i'm of praying that nigeria is not established oh established as a terrorist okay. nation okay, okay. Uh, in as much as it sounds very good it sounds very you know exciting uh, but it's also big business for the U.S. economy. Mm -hmm. It's a very big one. You are talking of $600 million. million. Dollars. Um, but the, it, it's a better one compared to Obama. Obama was busy blocking Nigeria from even when you have the money, you are ready to purchase arms. That was during uh, uh, Jonathan. He did yes. make this what uh, Trump is uh, perfecting now started with Obama actually mm -hmm. because uh, you know you remember when when the, yeah tenure. you remember well, when it, President Buhari was in the U.S. Yeah. As such, okay, go on. Some of us are, uh, it's not the issue of the political side of, and like you said, the issue of the human rights abuses mm. and all those. So some of us, um, they sound pedestrian because you, are, you should do a juxtaposition between the percentage of human rights abuses and the percentage of um, the carnage perpetrated by this sect of, um, mm. you know, uh, madmen you call Boko Haram. Uh, the num within a space of five years, they have killed an average of about 27,000 human beings. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not on record that even 1,000 have been killed as a result of uh, human rights abuses and the like. It's not on record. Uh, in in as much featured, as, yeah. yes, we, we agree that there are pockets of um, abuses here and there. But for some of us, it's not strong enough to prevent us from having what it takes to curtail terrorism. It, it's not strong enough. Uh, all, all we need to do is um, maybe do a reorientation, um, try to make our um, uh, security agencies more civilized mm -hmm. in dealing with fellow Nigerians and all those stuff like that. 
but it's not enough. E even in developed countries, you have serious abuses. How many mm. days ago you also saw somebody being dragged in the most horrific manner you can think yeah. of out of a United States the United Airlines. I mean, what, mm. what are you going to say about that? If it were to be in Nigeria or in any other part of the black race, it would be a different ball game entirely. So anyway, le le talking about the security aspect of what we, the good news, uh, I pray it scale true mm. because it will fortify our security, it will fortify our defense system. But beyond that also, we're also looking at a situation where the Nigerian government will look inward. All right. We begin to build its own military capacity, not mm. dependent upon foreign uh, assistance mm. because whatever aid, whatever assistance they give you, it's to a limit. You yeah. can't exceed certain limits mm -hmm. militarily. Why? Because they don't want a situation where when you have issues with them, you'll be able to stand tall or to be able to raise your voice and all And when the, our president was coming in, he did promise that uh, very soon Nigeria will start producing some hardware, military hardware in, in, in our own uh, soil, made in Nigeria military hardware. It, it's uh, not impossible. We have, the, we have the hardware. human capacity to do that. We also have the resources to do that. The only thing we don't have is the government will and mm. determination to do that. And if the president is saying that very soon, how soon? Yeah. Time is not on anybody's side. Whatever is worth doing at all is worth doing now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So if Nigeria does get this A-29 aircraft, uh, you believe that it will actually go a long way in helping us tackle uh, this Boko Haram menace of course, in, in of the course, northeast. Of course, not, not, not just Boko Haram. Yes. Our defense system as a whole. Mm -hmm. All right. Our defense system as a whole. Now, uh, we, we talk about um, the, the Fulani headsmen that is becoming another set of Boko Haram yeah. as we speak now. Mm -hmm. While the main Boko Haram is dying down gradually, this one is coming up. Uh, I think it will help a lot in curbing some yeah, insurgency. But of course, the terms of the sale are not yet um, very clear. Uh, like you said, this is big business for the United States. Of it course, uh, Donald Trump wants to create high, massive jobs for his people. That's a promise for him. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering, to what extent, really, is this a mutually beneficial uh, deal? There's nothing mutually beneficial. Uh, nothing. It's a one-sided right? thing. Why? No, it's a one-sided thing. We could as well buy the same arm in China, and it will be cheaper. Uh, but because there are so many restrictions, there mm. are so many politics that come to play, mm -hmm. um, there are so many impositions and the like. So at times you see yourself purchasing from where you ordinarily would not have loved to purchase. Why? Because if you look this other way, um, for diplomatic purposes, mm. you may be f seeing yourself in some avoidable troubles and all those stuff like that. So it's not as if it's the best deal, if you are talking of $600 million. Okay. It, it may not be the best of all deals. It, it's, but the advantage to us, like we have said, all right. we need this thing dearly. Okay, let's yeah. talk about the aircraft itself. It has, if we get this aircraft, it has the cap capability to allow the pilot pinpoint target at night. Mm. And I'm worried about the friendly fire we witnessed uh, just a few months ago okay. in the uh, 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 camp. If we now have that, what will happen? No, it depends on who is um, actually operating the aircraft. Uh, no matter how sophisticated the machine is, it still needs the assistance of man. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a drone, somebody had to operate the drone, control the drone. So it, it depends on, and that brings so us that's to where the issue training of, and manpower yes, comes apart in? apart from training and manpower, infiltration. Because while you are getting this, mm -hmm. you must begin to under, look inward. Who are the people that are going to man it? Let's leave that question hanging there. Antonio Foyeton, thank you so much <laughs> for coming on the show. Uh, Antonio Foyeton is a thank security you. expert. Thank Always you. a delight to have you.